I will. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep moving with that inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I will. Um, now, in the part two, this will be like, now I'm going to begin hopefully on some of the subject matters that we want to um, touch on as well as give the reference point to the proof. I think we ended with, in the, in the first part, which we call Rastafari's Wahido versus um, Rastafari errors. And now we're saying some of these errors are errors that even we might have held to, you understand? But it did not damage I and I faith because we were seeking the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ. You understand? And growing. You understand? It only becomes kind of a, a sin or an error or a stumbling block if one want to say, well, what I know in my um, half original state, that means we're getting to know things about our roots, which is the original, but we still have been told a lot of lies and deceptions and other things that we haven't been able to fully identify or root out. This is why the Holy Spirit is so very important, you know what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit. In Rastafari, we're called the Isla Iris. You know what I mean? That we have this Isla Iris, that we, that we feel it, those of us who still are sensitive, whose consciences haven't burnt out, we still feel it, but we cannot, you understand, you understand, you don't sit up, brethren, I'm like, you know, like you vibe, you and the next brother and our sister and vibe the same thing. Now, the key thing is to be able to test the spirit. Now, how do we do that? It's based on our faith. You understand, if we're not very mature in the faith, then we cannot very maturely test the spirit. And we might be deceived. This is why the word is so very important. So, in speaking about Rastafari Tawahido, we have to touch on the language of God. So, I had, I had actually... Um, made a couple of notes and a couple of references right here. We don't have really proper room for all of the documentation that we might show you and we would like to show to you in this particular series right here. But um, one of those uh, subject matters was to discuss Rastafari and Ethiopian Orthodoxy. And we want to heal up to all, say salam to all, I and I orthodox, Rastafari, brother and sister, and these are those who might have gotten baptized, might have joined an Ethiopian Orthodox Church, or perhaps even the Church of, as we say, His Majesty, you understand, the Church of His Imperial Majesty, based on the one whom His Majesty had sent concerning the churchical matters, and that is Abuna. Yisahak, the late Abuna Archbishop Yisahak. All right, and this is a very good book. We point this book out because this book um, it summarizes much of the history and even doctrinal matters and gives certain important details that we need to study. You understand? We need to reason on. We need to understand. Even ask those willing Ethiopians who are of the true faith to teach us and show us and help us in our growth, because as they help us with what they know and what they have, there's also an impartation to us as the once lost but now found date to Israel, to I and I, Ras, the far from out of the 12 tribes of the Beit of Israel. But of course, giving, you know, due um, recognition to um, Lickle Benjamin, you know, in Jamaica and Jamaica's role in Ras, the far but I and I pray for Jamaica because there's certain schemes that are underway that Josh Shaw and I and I, and you know, repatriation is a must. You know, repatriation is a must. But let's 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 uh um leave that particular point, you understand, hopefully for another reasoning. Another reasoning. Um so this book right here is a very important book. Um I had to get another copy of this and cuz you see this cuz I, I think I owe you a copy as well. Um, forgive I for that. Um, I, I recall that there's a copy that I got from him actually, so I owe him a copy as well. My cousin, uh, Tesfar Baruch. But anyway, let's touch on this and let's get into this. Um, um, first point is Rastafari. Now, let's put this Bamarinya. The language is the key, right? His Majesty teaches us at Amawi, Haida Salasi. He said that language is the key to what culture? The Ethiopian World Federation Constitution and Bylaws, it says that we're supposed to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture. Well, how can we truly, in the spirit of truth, 
disseminate that culture unless we first ourselves receive it, you understand, know get to learn it, you understand, know in other words, practice it and perfect it. You know, so language is the key. His Majesty states that language is the key. So Ross, right, Ross, said, said, Ri, Ras, right? Tesari, this is the way the word is broken down, not as Rasta. Because if you have Rasta, all you have is Sari. Sari means a coward. And we told some brothers that years ago, and they were upset with buying that. I mean, you know, still it was in love and everything, but they were like, oh, just because you know something hard with us. I said, cool. They went to Ethiopia. Then they came back from Ethiopia saying, oh, wow. Like, yo, even the Rastafari, they, they, they say Tesari, they say Tesari, they, even when they chant, they say Tesari, and they don't say Farai far or Sari. And that was interesting. That was interesting. And, and, and no doubt there are others who can testify to that. And, you know, we're not running around saying, oh, we told them so, 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 so. But we know this. It's like when Christ healed ten lepers and only one came back to give thanks. So when we study Christ, it helps us to even regulate you know, our feelings and thoughts. That's why he's the savior. Yeshua HaMoshiach, the son of God, is the savior of our souls, of our psyche. So when one says that, well, well, Christ or Jesus, Yeshua, is not the Bain Ha Elohim, it is the Ethiopian eunuch that says, so the son of God is of what the same substance. Well, Christ says, you know, even Hebrew says that, you know, that though he was equal with God, you know, and he didn't think it was like like robbing the divine to be equal with God. You see, it was, it was the haters. It was the false doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the different so-called religious authorities of that day and time that were teaching opposite, teaching traditions. You see, when we talk about the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, we don't want so much the traditions if they are not biblically, scripturally based, if they're not based on the Word of God. And we're not the first to say this. His Majesty himself, if you read his autobiography, he had to make re reformation, reforms in the church. Even um, Ate Tedros, or, or Tewujos, Tedros, he also had to make reforms in the church because if you know our story, you will recognize that when the Catholic, the Roman Catholic, the Romanist invasion, circa what was it, uh, 16th century, which also corresponds with this very same, this very same image. This is where this very same image began to sneak into Ethiopia along with the uh, whitewashed Mary, um, Lucretia. Lucretia was his sister. This is not Jesus Christ, this is Caesar Borgia. You understand, this is basically the image that the whole world has been deceived into believing. You understand, is the image of the Son of God, of the Savior. So when one say, well, Jesus is not God, we have to ask, which Jesus are you talking about? And if you're coming from an Ethiopic or a Tawahido foundation, are you, first of all, are you coming from an Ethiopic foundation? Are you coming from this? And it's not to say that you have no right to be Rastafari, you have no right to speak on Rastafari, but you're in error when you say, well, do what his majesty says and obey his majesty. Have you obeyed his majesty? And are you willing to be obedient to this gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ? Or are you perpetrating something other than what his majesty bears witness to? We don't want, you know, no um, devil's philosophy. You know, saying, give I and I the teaching of his imperial majesty. So let's deal with the language, the linguistic point. If we go to Zephaniah in the Old Testament and the prophets in the Via, Zephaniah um, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, let's read. It says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they all may call upon the name of the L-O-R-D, or Lord, which is Yahweh in the Hebrew, and is Igzi'ab Her in the Ethiopic and world in Hargor, the Sustainer, to serve him with one consent. Like the New Testament says to be, we are all to be of the same mind concerning the things of God and Christ. 
right? That's what this study to show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we put out a teaching, and then one comes and then says, well, that's not what his majesty teaches. One can always recognize the fact, make repentance and correction and upgrade. But then if one continues in that, then the word already is witness. It's not I and I judging anybody, but it's his word. As Christ says, he don't judge, but it's the word. They have Moses to judge. We have the prophets to judge. You understand? The ones who judge what brought forward the judgment that's now being revealed in these latter days and times of the, the Gentile world domination, a.k.a. white supremacy, the European, Gentile, Anglo-American, European, so forth and so on. Verse 10, it says, from beyond, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter, the what, the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering shall bring mine offering. Now, if you notice, he says a pure language. Some folks say, well, Amharic is not a pure language because it actually comes from, you know, uh, Ethiopic and it has Oromo, Kalat, or so-called Gala words, and Cushitic words, so it's like Afro-Shemitic. Well, Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic, but what does pure mean? You know, what does pure mean? If we look at what pure mean when you talk about something being purified, that means it's, it's refined. It comes to that particular process. Stay tuned for the teaching on how both the King James Bible and Hannah Samadhi, the first Bible, have gone through seven languages, seven different linguistic forms, till we come down to the present form that we have. Both the King James Bible on one hand, and Edomawi Kaila Selassie's Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, on the next hand. That's what we point to those two right there. You understand? Know to study and compare. You understand? Know study and compare. But anyway, let's get to the word Tawahido. Right? So Tawahido Rastafari. Minma lets know. What does it mean? Now, some are still probably saying head creator, even after we laboriously break this down, show you in the dictionary, show you the act Ethiopian, you know, um, if you're at the way to ask his majesty, you understand, and after all of that and you're still denying it, then, you know, if you send one in his name and you trust and verify, you should accept the truth, you understand, unless there's some other spirit in you. The true spirit accepts the truth. The false spirit denies the truth. Now, Rastafari, it means what? It means the head, the self, Ras, Rosh, Aridis, right? The head, the self, Tefari, to be reverent, to be respected. You recall the parable of Yeshua, the parable of the Son of God concerning the kingdom of heaven? And it's interesting because we have the Rastafari say that the coming of His Majesty, the establishment of that government, which is still ongoing, is the, is, the, is the cornerstone, in other words, of the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ. So now Christ, the Son, in the New Testament, He, he gives these parables, right, these, these, these um, um, something called a mythology in a sense, or, or metaphorical stories of what the kingdom would be like in the kingdom age. If we study the parables, and we study Ethiopia, and we study His Majesty, and we study where we're at now, we can see the parables are fully being unveiled and revealed to us. But he says, he gives a parable about a man who had um, a land, a state, like farms, there were geberewoch, or farmers, what the Bible calls husbandmen. And that to these particular husbandmen were um, given the charge because he was going to go into a far country. You understand? He was going to go to a far country somewhere. And so he left it in charge of these ones called husbandmen, or geberewoch. You understand? Geberewoch, right? Farmers or, or um, yeah, agriculturalists, so to speak. But husbandmen is, is good in the King James for right now. Anyway, the point, of, the point is this. He, when, when he now goes to check on that, those who he had put it under, and we look at the, the husbandmen to be like the clergy. The husbandmen are like those who are supposed to be in, in the order of Christ. You know, in the, the, the under shepherd, so to speak. They're supposed to take care of the master's property and not to take the master's property, in a sense, as their own, but they have a particular, um, a stewardship. 
you know what I'm saying? They have a managerial ship, an administration, so to speak, right? So what happens, he sends ones and ones to check on his land, and they kill everybody that comes to check on what's going on. Finally, he sends his son, right? He sends, this is what's interesting, he sends his, his own son, and he says it might be that they might reverence him, that they might respect him, that they might reverence him. Now, when you look at that word, the root of that word, in the Ethiopic, right, you find Tetheri, right, the son of man, and we touched on the son of man, 120, so forth, and so on, and this is very significant in this year, 2010. Now, so Ras Tetheri means the head, right, the head, right, the head or the self, right, to be feared, or we can say respected, well, or reverence, as the Bible said, reverence. Now, you know how to use reverend this, reverend that, reverend, but he's the one to be reverent, right? Remember what Christ says, um, fear not man, right? He says, fear not man who can destroy the flesh, but fear he who can destroy the the, the flesh and the soul in 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 in, in Gehenna in the, the in the Gehenna or the Isata Gehenna the, or the, the the fires of hell. You understand? A lot of people say, oh well, hell doesn't really exist. Well, it's all different. Depends on the conscious. Depends on what your consciousness. You can get hell for your consciousness. There's hell that can be created for every sort of consciousness. You can do not be bold against the word of God in, 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 in truth. You know what Don't be bold against that. You know what But that's just I and I word to I and I brothers and sisters as I would want one to also give I and I that particular word in the spirit of Christ and the love of Christ as well. Because very serious times. You know what I'm saying? Some folks think that, well, oh, we're saying this because we're acting like we know such a... No, we're learning too. Many of these things we learn too. You know what I'm I mean, do you think that, in a sense, that um, just we want to do this? You know what I'm We have been called to do this, and we see the the benefit and the effect on our brothers and sisters that ones who have told us and ones who have shared different resources with I and I. We would be wasting that 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 good favor. You know what I'm We would be um, going against the spirit and the truth. You know what I'm saying? So. Let's deal with this right here. Another interesting thing about uh, Tefari, and we're not going to get into this right here. This is more on the Rastafari Kabbalah level. When you look at Tefari, right? When you look at Tefari, right? Tefari actually equals in the Hebrew the Tiferet, right? The Tiferet. This is very interesting because when you look in the Hebraic sense, this actually refers to glory. You understand? This, this is very, very interesting. Tiferet. You understand? Tiferet. And when you look at where Tiferet is on the so-called Kabbalistic tree, it is right here. And then now, this is what's so interesting when you start to see the Ethiopic, the world, and hard link. When, when ones and ones ask, well, we're going to study Hebrew, all of this, I say yes, but from the English perspective, start to study, first of all, get a good Schofield reference Bible. Then start to go into the, the words behind, like in the in the um, Septuagint Greek. You know, saying get familiar with some of those 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 words because the words help to shape the context of the interpretation. Like even the different names in the Bible. So we point out the metaphysical Bible dictionary because a lot of times ones don't understand the context of it because you have a name and you don't have the full understanding. You might have some of the understanding, or you might have half the truth, like many of us have had concerning Ras the far right. That Ras means head, and then they said, well, uh, the far or Teferi means creator. Then we find that, well, it's actually Fetari, right? It's the word Fetari. Fetari means creator in the world and heart. And, and, and it's almost like in, in a sense, almost like dyslexia, you know, then plus a hard, you know, hard letters, you know, with that, um, set test. It's a soft test, you know, and so it's like it's reversed and it's a different letter. And that basically shows that, that basically shows that we're in error or ignorance of the half of the story that we should know. All right, so let's, um, 
let's continue with this right here, with Tawahido, Tawahido, because this will, this will serve to lay a foundation, a very important foundation for what um, needs to be taught and needs to be disseminated. Now, Tawahido Bamarinya is Te, Wa, Te, Do, right? Te, Wa, Te, Do, Te, Wa, Te, Do. But it comes from, let's, let's, let's get the dictionary right here. But these are resources that are out there. Um, you can download them. You know, if you search, if you seek it out, you'll find it. Or you can get a copy through, through our um, books, you know, to the, the resources that we have online. Or you can, you know, go to your local bookstore or other sellers. Basically, get it and study it, you understand, and, and, and learn the truth. That's, that's the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's that the truth shall set us free. You know what I'm saying? The truth shall set us free. Because he who the Son has freed, right? As I said, he who the Son has freed is freed indeed. So we find it to be very dangerous, you know what I'm saying, to one spiritual growth denying the Son. You know what I'm saying? Denying Yeshua. Like we said, if one is speaking of the whitewash, you know, Caesar Bogia's image right here, you know what I'm saying? We understand that. But just because you deny the whitewash, you understand, does not mean that the, that the original or the truth is not true. You over, that's a trick of the enemy too. They come and whitewash the image so now ones are so upset with the whitewashing and what they believe, the lies they believe that they reject the truth too. That's the trick of the enemy. You understand? That's the trick of the enemy. Don't fall for those wilds of Diabolos, right? Now, if you look on page 166, this is this book right here. Kind of beat up, kind of worn down right here, our copy. It's the um, Wolf Less Laws um, Concise and Hard Dictionary. Now, remember, he turns us a pure language, a pure or a refined language. Just like when you purify something. You know what I'm Now, if you look right down here, where is it? It's the, it's the one that's highlighted. You see that right there? Maybe you can pause that. I hope it's clear. You can pause that. Just get a, get, a, get a clear shot of it. So you see right there? That, it's going to show you the root right there. That's on page 166. So if you have this, go to 166, right? And you're going to see Wahade. You're going to see Tewahade. 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 And, uh, which means be united, but really it has an asterisk next to wahada, 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 right? And it's this word right here. It says, um, let me see if I was actually wahada, wahada, not wahada, but wet. So it has wet, it has he, and then it has de. So this is wet. <laughs> like when you hear the Arabs and the Mohammedans, some of them say, Muhammad, Muhammad, It's that sort of, so that each of the ages, one of the acts, why in the heart got so many ages and they all sound the same? That's because many of them, Maharas or the Amaras, are all speaking the same way. It doesn't mean that they all are the same value, the same spiritual weight. They are not. But being that as it may, you understand, um, this is death. So Weheda, Weheda. Now from Weheda, then it has Tewaheda, right? Or Tewahada, some might say. And what does it mean? It says to be united, to merge. Then as a verb intransitive pertaining to companies, right? Amalgamate, verb intransitive. To fuse, to fuse, right? To fuse something, to mix, verb intransitive. Then the last um, entry it has here says to be be digested, to digest something. And that's very, very interesting if you study digestion, if you study the science of digestion. This is why when Romans says that, you know, the things that are clearly revealed to them, you know what I'm saying? The things that, the things that are clearly revealed to us. So if we look at man and look at how man is wonderfully made, it also teaches us things if we are in the spirit of truth and not trying to, if we deny our own way of looking, our own ego, you know what I'm saying, or our own little clique or group, and try to find the truth. You know what I'm saying? 
to put oneself in that proper state of mind, that's where faith and prayer and meditation, in other words, to put yourself or to put the ego, you know what I'm saying, or what you believe, or if I come out and say that I was wrong, like I was one of my Rastafari saying, wow, we're going to have to be the ones to come out and say that Rastafari don't mean head creator. And the first thing, fire burn, who that mind thinking? Okay, yeah, I love you still, for Christ's sake, for Yeshua's sake, I love you still. Personally, I don't like you very much, but I love you still, because that's his command. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what he commands. Because we know they're ignorant of this. Sooner or later, whether them or their children come to this old, that's why Christ said, it's your children that will be judging you. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in that sense, in his spirit and his truth. That's talking about the disobedient ones who need to be stoned. Well, that's what the Bible states. Obama said, well, who are you going to believe? Are you going to do this? Or are you going to do that? That was a good, you know, kind of legalistic kind of argument he was giving there to the Americans and to people who are under this law. But let's move forward under John law. It says, Awahada, Awahada means to amalgamate, means to uh, unite, it means to digest food. So the root of our faith right here that sometimes is translated as orthodox. Sometimes it's translated as union nights. You feel with sometimes it's translated even and, and mistranslated as monophysite. We're not gonna get on that level of physicism, great right, deal, natures of Christ when the early church did an autopsy. They did an autopsy on Christ's divine nature. And you might have read about these different things, and if you are part of the Ethiopian and the Ethiopic Orthodox family, you recognize the Council of Chalcedon, the Council of Nicaea or Nicaea, and the different um, ecumenical, ecumenical councils when there were different um, conflicts of theology. Like, for example, there was, there was Arius. Arius. And what I'm hearing when one to say that Jesus is not God, this reminds me of Arius philosophy, you know, or, or what's called uh, uh, Iranianism, Iranian, A-R-I-A-S, and his name was also A-R-I-U-S, and this was one who basically um, denied that Jesus was God, basically, and he was rebuked by the 318 um, Tawahedo fathers. The 318 uh, or the two Hymenal uh, fathers, the 318 Orthodox fathers. That number 318 is interesting because if you recall, Abraham had 318 trained servants that went to rescue, um, I think, Lot, or they they engaged in the war of the, of the nations in chapter 13 before Melchizedek came to pronounce a blessing on Abraham and his seed of who in flesh and in spirit and in truth we are through our black blood and Savior Yeshua HaMushiach. So denying that Christ, denying Christ's divinity is, is either, either you know what you're saying to be untrue and woe to you, or you are in ignorance of the teaching of His Majesty. And we will assume the latter. Yo, and please don't prove the former. All right? But this word means to merge, consolidate, integrate. Now, the word wihud, it means a compound or a combination. Mewahad, mewahad means agglutination or fusion, or fusion. Now, here's what's very, very important about this. This is where this word means having been made one. This means to that which has been made united, that which has been made one, to walk it though, right? This right here, from this word, if you break this down, you get ahad, ahad, because ahad as an ahadu, which means the one. So this is the process that restores us into the family of God in Christ. You know what I'm saying? No longer are we just creatures like those who are unregenerated, not born again. They are creatures of God, but they only become sons or daughters of God through the new birth, you know what I'm saying? Through the new birth in our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. That is Bible, that is, that is scripture, you know what I'm saying? And that is also Christian metaphysical science. 
it is real and exact from the biblical perspective and from the actual perspective. And we have Nagusa Nagas, Kedamawi, Haila Salasi as the demonstration. The old saying it's the Father that bears witness to the Son. According to the Word, Christ says no one bears witness to Him, even though we are called to be witnesses, but the only one that gives a perfect witness is the Father. Yovasan is the Father, but through His Spirit, Yovasan through His Spirit, we become one. This is what when you read in the Bible in, in John, you read in John, He says that anyone who is to the faithful Jews, the Judahites, the black Jews, Hebrews, Ethiopians, he Hebrews, says to those who, who 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 receive my word, who receive the word, right, and and, and those who, who who have the word as a foundation. You, then when they accept that word of Yeshua in, in, in his revelation time or so-called, quote, 2,000 so-called years ago or so, he said that I will sup with you, and as the Father is one with me, we will sup with you, and keep saying we will all be one. We will all become one. Now, if you stop for a moment and say, wait, Yeshua, you said that if we have you, you will sup with us, so that means if it's me and you, but then your father is with you, so then me and you and your father, that seems to be three or something like that. You remember two or three gathered together? So the power of prayer, some don't understand the power of prayer because they're denying you understand, the spirit of God because they don't see it with their physical eyes. You understand? And through the revelation of the God-man, of the King of Kings, yes, we see him. Behold, you understand, we behold him. That is very important for us, you understand, and that's very important in his word. But that is not the all of it. Now, in addition to this, now, just breaking this down, or you know, building up on this foundation, so what it means to be made one. Now, now, why? Haven't you ever asked the question, why? Why it has to be made one? The only way it has to be made one is if it somehow has been broken away from one. You understand? Or it has been divided into many little pieces. This is exactly what Satan did in the Ganetta Aiden. This is exactly what the, what the fall of man, the ignorance of man, the sin of man, the deception of Haywan, the mother of all living cause for humanity. This is the very reason for the coming and the birth of the Son of God. Yo send of the Bain Ha Elohim. Yo, and if you study our creed, the, the, the Ethiopian creed with his majesty, yo, and this is the church. Church the church is based on the Christian requirements. Yo, and when we get to our root, yo, and then we will get into this truth right here. And even the aspect some will say, Well, what about the language? You know, the language is not so much, I don't want anyone to think that, well, what I know or what I'm able to do is because of all my effort. Whenever I begin to think that, it's like I, I, I slow down or I, I'm not able to achieve like I am when I, when I focus my faith on Him. And because His Word says that He gives to us this, that we study and show ourselves approved our thinking that we are doing it. Remember, the work of I and I is to believe, quote, end quote, but really to ominate, to have faith in him whom he has sent. And the one whom he has sent is Yeshua HaMashiach. So a lot of this kind of talk that we hear in quote Rastafari name needs to get, as we would say, draped up. You know what I'm saying? It needs to get pulled up and needs to be put into stark contrast with the teaching of his majesty. So we point this out as a basic foundation of what we mean by Rastafari Tawahidah. In other words, what Rastafari have said, the ones who, some of the earliest Rastafari, some of them were not able to read or write. Some of them had only memorized the scripture, memorized and committed to heart the scripture. You know what I'm saying? But yet, from what they knew, they didn't have 24-7 cable and internet and a bunch of pictures. You know, some of the pictures that we have received over the years, some of you youngins, might not know it, but you might see these worn out photocopies. I mean, like, look at this photocopy. It's all worn. That's all we had. That's all the elders were able to pass on to us, and it's only now that many of us are beginning to see the 
pristine and pure, you know, you know, the, the clear images and different things that we only had in a in a in a, in a Xerox form and, and, and some bad Xerox copies at that. But from even that limitation of information, it was the spirit of God in Christ that was enlightening and illuminating the early Aras, the early yokes and the early brethren and sisterin and communities and many of the names that most might identify with more than the other. But as Paul says, what is Apollo? Who is Apollo? It's all of Yeshua. It's all of God and his Christ. It's all of the Father, Abba, Father and the Son. That's that's the swift to understand. So that we want to break down right here. Now this all leads to and the manifestation of the Ahadu Amrat. When we say Besama Ab in the name of the Father, where Lord in the name of the Son, where men says Caduce and the Holy Spirit. Notice these are five words. Hawadi Apollo he speaks about these same five words. He preferred to speak five words with his he says I think understanding. Then, then, then a bunch of words, you understand, I think you don't say bunch, but then, then a thousand words or thousands of words in another tongue. He speaks about the gift of languages. If you notice, when Yeshua HaMoshiach, the resurrected Christos, Iesus, not Iesus Christos, but after the resurrection, Christos, Iesus, when he spoke to the disciples, they were concerned about the kingdom. They were concerned about the government. They were concerned about overthrowing Roman Gentile rulership, you understand, and establishing the kingdom of David. And they were asking about that. The same way a lot of us also are concerned about that. When are we going to be, you know, the rightful rulers, you understand, <laughs> under the king of kings authority that we have the faith and the promise that we should be. But Christ said, first, don't worry about that. These things are in the times and the seasons, you understand, of uh, uh, in the, the authority of the Father. You don't worry about those times and seasons. But then he told them what to, what to focus on. He said to go up into the upper room, right, and to pray, you understand, that one receive that power, you understand, and the Holy Spirit, that receive the Holy Spirit. Remember when Christ blew on them? He blew on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now, if spirit is not real, and if God is not spirit, then someone is a liar, right? And as someone who's a liar is not the king of kings, that someone who's a liar is not a yes of Christo, that someone who's a liar is not I and I in the spirit and truth of the king of kings and his Christ. But as those who say that, well, his majesty is God and he's king of kings, and they affirm all of the things that we say, all the claims that we say are woe and are main to, but not according to the teaching of his majesty. So we have to pull up here and say, wait, something is something is not right here. Let's get to the root of this. Now when we go to the creed, have you familiarized yourself with the Ethiopian um, Orthodox, what's called the Orthodox Creed? You know, that even in a translation, right? Um, and it's very interesting when you do familiarize yourself with with that. Um, let's see if we can get another, some of these are the smaller books right here. Now true, most of these are in Amharic. Many translations are being made and we're even seeking to translate um, these to the best of I and I ability. But it's not just our ability, we rely on the Holy Spirit so we see things getting better. You know, it, it, it's a whole other way of thinking. You know what I'm saying? It's really a whole other way of thinking. Like what it says, not to be conformed to the world, but to be re renewed. To hear your mind be conformed to what will be renewed. You understand? And, and by the renewing of your mind. That's what our service is supposed to be about. That's what the true service of the King of Kings and its Christ is supposed to be about. So it's often called, it's often in the Zawetir Selot. It is the fifth, it is the fifth reading or well, the fifth article, um, on, as, as you will, and it's called the Ahimanot Masharet, or Masharet, right? And it's, off, it's, it's what is called the Creed. Let me just read a couple of verses and just translate um, um, a raw translation of this. So you will understand what we mean by Rastafari Zawahidah. 
what we say is that the original vision of Rastafari, you understand, is a fulfillment of what we know as the Tuahedo Ritua Haimeno. And that's what really made His Majesty, in that sense, um, cheerful and cry. You understand, even in Jamaica in 66 and elsewhere in Harlem and other places, that these people so far removed, it was the Spirit of God that had revealed to them things that flesh and blood could not tell them. And in the fact that we find that much of what was the original Rastafari, original teaching concerning the, the, the true theology, and theology means God, Theo, Logos, study or word, or word of study. So the study of God's word, as we said, study and show yourself a proof. It's, it's not theology that is bad, it is counterfeit theology. Because if people are studying it, they'll be able to distinguish the truth from the false or the truth from the error. And he says, Christ says, if one does the word, then they would know. So as we're studying, there's also things that we must put into um, work or action or manifestation or demonstration. You know what I'm saying? We can't say that we have this faith, but we do not have the work. Then it is dead. It is not living faith. You know, right? And John lives. So it says, Bessima Allah, the man says, Kedusa Hadu Amlak. This is Anket Amis. It says, Hulun, Yeset Re, and Amlak, Bemihon, Bek, Yavir, Av, in Naminale. And here in the Mark it says, Hulun, all, the entirety of reality. Or ones might say in the, the biblical sense, the creator of heaven and earth and the sea. But here it says, Hulun, even that which we cannot see. You understand? Hulun, yes, the one who created all. And Amlak, Yahweh Ahad, and Amlak Bemihon, in the one who is the one. God, in the sustainer, and it corresponds to Yahweh, right? And Yahweh means he who is who he is. It means the sustainer, the father, the father of light, of the firstborn chosen nation. All of that is embedded in that name. That name is is the most high, the Yahweh pre um um but his name before the world was created according to Sene the Golgotha, which is another Ethiopic document. But it says, in Father, in God the Father, if you please. In Naminalin, it says, the first, the first Araf the Negar, the first sentence states that we have faith. We have Amen and Naminalen and the good is uh, Naamen. Na na amen. It's like when we say, even in the ghetto we say it too, but we don't know. When we say Naamen, 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 and Naminalen. See, it's one, it's one, it's one. <laughs> Over, when you're overstanding, you have the Spirit of God in Christ, it is one. Otherwise, you're not in fusion. Remember, this means fusion, right? One, and this means to be fused as opposed to being confused. You know what I'm saying? Being fused to Wahido, the fusion, avoiding Babylon, which is confusion, right? The true teaching of His Majesty and His Christ, as opposed to a lot of the lies and the errors and other things that we have heard, you understand, by the Satan, by the devil who has deceived the whole world. He's calling us out of that and we must be obedient. So second verse says Samayinna Midrin the one who created the heaven and the earth or the sky and the land. It says Yami Tayawinan Yami Tayawinna Yami Tayawinna Yamai Tayawin Alam Sai Satar Kadar Sugar the never on the average, the mihon, the angita, the Jesus Christos in nominale. Now let's break this down. It says the one who created, right? The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who is yemi tayo and not the one who is seen. The one who appears, 
the one who is able to make his appearance known, right? And Yamai Tayawin, and the one who is not seen. Now that's the, that's the point that when we heard that God is not, you know, He's not invisible. If you believe He's invisible, no. One should have said it in, 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 in the spirit of many people believe that God is just invisible. You understand? Many people believe that He's just visible. But our creed or our uh, naamen, you know, what we what we admit, you understand? That the foundation, as it says right here, is called the Hymenot, the living faith Maseret or Masharet, the foundation or the base. This is the base. This is built on the foundation. This is the foundation of the living faith of the King of Kings and His Christ. The same today, yesterday, forever. His Majesty did not change. His Majesty revealed this. You understand? So it says, in the one who is seen, right? Who is seen, and, or, or, or some might say, some might say the world which is seen and the world which is not seen. But now, because after it says all left, you understand? Sai Fetel, right? So the world, you know, the world before the world was created with Ka'arusugar, with him, Benevere, who was, who was on one, Ya'ab Lich, who was the one son or the son of the father, that Mihon, in him, that on Geta, in one Lord, or one Adonai, according to the Hebrew, that Jesus Christos, or according to the Hebrew, um, that Yeshua HaMoshiach, in nominalin, in nominalin, we have faith, we, we, um, bear witness to, we accept this as a principle of truth. That means there is no doubt in this. You know, and this is, this is when, when you can say in nominalin, and truly it be in nominalin, you understand, and there's no, there's no, um, I can say there's no interference of doubt or unbelief that one is truly on that foundation. But of course, when we come across these things, we say, when I first read that myself, I was like, I was thinking like, yeah, John revealed. On the same way, ones and ones would say, you see, you see, there's no spirit, there's no visible, there's no visible. And then I'm reading his Majesty's teaching, I'm saying, uh-oh, this is, this is not, this is, this, this, <laughs> this doesn't work like, you know, it's, it's almost like because they put the white Jesus Right? Some think we go to the black Jesus because of the white Jesus. But it's deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not to do just the opposite, but to learn what the truth is and that do. So this is very interesting. So when I heard, well, he's not, God is not seen, I said, this contradicts the foundation of our faith. And besides, it contradicts what the Bible says. I mean, let's give, give a biblical, because some might say, okay, well, that's the Ethiopian thing, so for a song, well, I'm going to deal with the Bible. So let's hit them up with the Bible, all right? They need to get this from the Bible. So let's get um, um, John. Let's hear, let's hear the son. Let's hear the son speak, all right? Let's hear the son speak. And the son says this right here in that scene, right, in this scene with um, the woman, right, the woman at the well, right? So the woman at the well, it says um, in verse, uh, now here's the key. This is what we, we love studying in the, and we appreciate love what those did by putting this together. You know, we keep even them who have already passed on in our prayers. You understand? Father, 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 he likes, he likes that. You understand? He likes when we take on his nature. I don't care if they were white or whatever like that, but they didn't have any kind of overt racism that we see here, and they provided a good work. You know, for all who would receive it. See my scope your reference. Anyway, chapter 4, verse 14, is a subscription right here where it says the indwelling spirit. Right? The indwelling, right? The indwelling spirit. See that right there? The indwelling spirit. Now, when we talk about the indwelling spirit, we're talking about a very important aspect of Tawahido. Right? Of Tawahido. Becoming one. Being fused. So that means there's something to be fused before it is fused. In what state is that something? That something must be confused. That means it's not fused. 
you know, divided and conquered. You understand? But we are called to be overcomers. But see, the key is the person, the man, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Yeshua HaMoshiach. So this, this is what confuses a lot of folks. They say, well, how are you going to say he's a man, and then how are you going to say he's God? Well, we were asked, well, how are you going to say anything to us unless you first study and show yourself a fruit? Because basically you're saying that you don't know anything. So until you learn what context and what is the foundation of this, why should we say anything, especially against the truth, and still we should learn the truth, you understand? Or, or we should learn so we can find the truth for ourselves. It, it, it's one thing if somebody says, well, I read this, and I know this is the uh, yeah, Hymenot Messeret, and I don't accept it. You we'll ask, oh, why don't you accept it? It's what his majesty accepts, you understand? So why don't you accept it? You know, I mean, it's got to be really a, a powerful argument, you know what I'm saying? But then how can they say, well, Hallelujah is God, and they don't do what God has said? You know what I'm He says, many will say, Lord, Lord, we've seen you, we've seen you. You know what I mean? I'm also on the point of idols. There's a lot of different kind of idols. You know what I'm saying? We're focusing on the spiritual idols. There's the spiritual idols that the people's heart and mind, just like this whitewashed Jesus. You know what I'm saying? This has become an idol, too. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to break this or tear down this image. We could burn this image right now. But will that take the image out of your mind? Will that take the image out of your heart? You see what I'm saying? How do you remove that false image from your heart and your mind? You see what I'm saying? Do you take a physical means? Like a lot of these people become really mentally unstable and confused, or you're going to do something like that and hurt yourself, or you're trying to pull this out of your head? You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you deny the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And what you deny the manifest can do. You know what I'm saying? So we have to give a very serious word and a warning on this particular matter and thing. So let's get right here, John chapter chapter four. It says, um, this is the indwelling spirit, and we're gonna move from verse twenty one, right? Where Yeshua, Jesus or Jesus if you please, saith to her, Woman, believe me, woman, I'm an enemy. You understand? And you understand? I'm an enemy. Have faith in me. Trust me. The hour cometh when ye, when you all, when y'all, shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem or Jerusalem, worship the Abba, worship the Abba, worship the Father. Ye, y'all, worship ye know not what. We, I and I, know what we, what I and I, worship for salvation is of the Jews. For salvation is of Yehuda. Salvation is of Jah's praise. Salvation is of Moa Ambesa, the Emma, the Geta, Yehuda. Yehovah, that's in the revelation now. Because now we have the revelation, Yehovah stands of the King of Kings and his Christ. This was said, of course, before that fullness of time. Verse 23 says, But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers, you understand, those who know the true worth, the true worshippers shall worship the Father, the Ab, the Abba, in what spirit and in what truth? For the Father, the Ab, the Abba, seeketh such to worship Him, to give Him worth. You can subscribe to him worth. They recognize that he is worth more than all this materialism, all this philosophy. I mean, the material is good for the material. But we're speaking about our souls. We're speaking about our spirits. You understand? Know we're speaking about life and eternal life. You understand? Know we're speaking about going from low degrees to high degrees, going from mortality to immortality. We're speaking about the gift of God in Yeshua HaMoshiach. We're not speaking about, you know, little um, secular things only. We overcome that, and we're manifesting that overcoming. Verse 24 says that God is a spirit. I mean, did you, did you get that right there? Now, see, some Christians, or those who call themselves so-called Christians, 
have gone forward to promote this and then demonize man. Now that man does not have an adversary who already is a spiritual adversary seeks to demonize him, but they, they'll say, like, I love God, but they, but they hate their brother. And, you know, the Bible speaks on that as well. You understand? On that as well. But here it clearly says that God, Ha Elohim, Her is a menses, is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, when Yeshua said that, the woman, the woman of Samaria, the woman at the well, she said to him, I know that Mashiach, I know that Moshiach cometh, which is called Christos. In other words, you have to remember, it's almost like us, that we have our own language, our pure language, but we still have to communicate in this language. So it's saying in the Hebrew, the Messiah, or the Moshiach, the Mashiach, which is called Christos, when he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus, or Yeshua, saith to her, I that speak to thee am he, or I that speak is to thee am. Now, now this, is, this is very, very important. So this is, here we get the identification of the Son, right, the Son of God. So he sent forth his son. And this whole idea of our father and son is not a New Testament thing only. We have it in Proverbs. Proverbs speaks about the father and son and says, well, if you know the truth, then, then, then tell me what his name is and then tell me what the name of his son is. Uh, and, and the Exodus, when, 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 when Yahweh said, Josh said to Moses, he said, let my people go. I've called my son. I've called my son out of Egypt. You understand? Where Israel, we as the corporate body, you understand? We as the body, Christ is the head, and God is the head of Christ. See, there's a hierarchy, there's an order to it. As man will say, well, I'm ahead of the woman, but only in Christ. You have to recognize. You can't take Christ's order just there and then, you know, go outside of it everywhere. It don't work like that. So even when we as mine say, well, I am the head of my wife, right? But my head of my head must be Yeshua. You say must be Jesus, must be the Christ. Because we know that Christ had, he's already testified that Abba, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin is his head. And thus also the woman, she's the head of the household, the Imabate. You understand? And of the children. And, and if that's the immobate, then of the household and whoever pertaineth to that household. This is, this is order. This is, this is bringing it together as one. You know, the family is the foundation of the nation. That's why from the very beginning to this very time, Satan, Diablos, you understand? Through the spiritual means and through men and people, you understand? Who are who are under his uh, slavery or his domination or his influence always attacks the family, especially the family of faith. You understand? It's like the, the, the so-called wicked families. Nothing can break them apart. I mean, they, they just, uh, you know, if, if the good people in the family, the people who are more godly, they might leave the family say, I'm, I'm back away, my family evil. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like the evil families, just seems to have a unity around evil and that major work is to divide and conquer the family. This is what's happened right here. This is why Tawahido is so very important and you must avoid, you know, this idea that Jesus is not God. But first you have to understand the Hebrew context of it. And this is this is this similar to the 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 um what you call it the, the pure language issue, why the language is so important. Because when we are reading translation, certain things like when he says, I am he, we, we, we miss the, the Aramaic and the Hebraic idiom of the time that when Christ said certain things, the Pharisees immediately said that, oh, you are calling yourself 
God or you are equaling yourself with God or you saying that and, and when you look at what he said you don't really get it in the English you know what I'm saying unless somebody maybe tries to tell you but if you read it in the context of the Hebraic mind you see we think from a Gentile white Western mind in the language that we use and so when you start to study certain words and you get to the root of them you find that it's a contradictory idea, but if you study Hebrew, if you study the Afro-Shemitic languages like Ethiopic or the Royal Amharic, I mean, and study the words, you know, according to the context, and to know this, that it's not by our own effort, but, but, but let me show you this word right here, because on um, language, I, I've been, um, you know, in teaching and ministering language to ones and ones, it's always is kind of saddening when certain brothers and sisters get frustrated in their study and, and that's Satan, that's the devil there and, and if we've said or done anything that has contributed to it um, make I and I know and I and I apologize for that but sometimes someone will be like how come you're not getting it, what's wrong, you stupid, you know and we need to avoid that you know what I'm this, this, is, this is where the work is in, like Paul said um, what, is our, what is our rightful um, service let's look at this right here for a moment in, 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 in Acts, in Romans, in Romans for a moment, where he says right here in Romans chapter 12, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, wendemoch, I beseech you therefore, wendemoch, wendemoch, by the mercies of Igaziabahir, the sustainer of the Father, the Father of light, the Father of the firstborn chosen nation, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, Kiddus, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have to renew our mind state. So now we'll study and show yourself a proof. Renew your mind state. It should be obvious. Right? And pray for wisdom if it's not so obvious or if you want anything to be obvious. That ye may prove what is that good. Prove it. When I say I, I believe or I guess, it says prove it. And with this proof that we are to seek. You know, so we would know the word and we would know the truth. And we have no doubt about the overcoming and eternal life. And acceptable and perfect will of God. Now in His Majesty's teaching, right, and His Majesty's utterances, He speaks about that very same thing. To make our what? Wills obedient. See, we can pray to Christ, we can pray to God, oh God, help me make my will obedient, but really He's telling us that's an our, that's our choice. But we have free choice, don't we? I mean, don't, don't you have free choice in your heart and your mind? Now if you don't, you have to pray you send in the name of Christ to get rid of those demons because you must be under some demonic or under drugs or some other kind of sorcery or pharmaceutical. You know what I'm saying? But prayer, you know what I'm saying? Prayer is very, very effective. Some some say, well, I've been praying, but it doesn't work out. Well, two things I, I have to ask. First of all, who do you pray to? How do you pray? What is the order? You, you know, prayer is a, is, a, is a small thing, but there is a certain orientation of mind because we're not in if we're not orientated then what are we we are disorientated interesting orient means to turn to the east right? I'm not saying that you can only pray or only to pray in one direction you know them because motion comes not from the east or the west but it's whom job bless you understand but the point is if we're not orientated in the proper in, in the principles in the Masevic this is why we point into the creed you know, the creed is very, very important because creed, what does creed mean? Creed comes from the Latin credo, me credo. Me credo means I believe, me credo. Kedamawi kaila salati, me credo. Gitachinam and anatachin yes Christo. Me credo, arastatari haimeno. In other words, I believe or I give credit. I, I give credit. Yes, credit, that word credit. But you almost say that the credit card system is a fake system. When they say they can't extend you no credit, they're basically saying, we don't believe that you are a good candidate or person to give money to. 
So it's about belief. You might be able to pay off that money or use that money and pay it back on time, but they'll say, we're not, all, we're not extending you no credit, no credo. You know, when you say, um, and, and when we say, but I say when you say, because I've begun to weed this out through my speech, we'll say, wow, that's incredible that His Majesty did such and such. Or that's incredible that such and such is true. You know what you're really saying? You're really saying that I do not give credit to this. And you might be saying in your spirit, depends on how much psychic force you give to it, how much emotion you give to it, you might be saying that I cannot accept this. You know when you show somebody the fact and the evidence and they say, wow, that's incredible. Or they might say, that's unbelievable. You know what I mean? You have to over that word shape reality. Word shape reality. And a lot of this Bible and even metaphysical substance comes down to some very simple principles that that are worked out day in and day out, that, that, that we utilize in, 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 the, in the smallest infinitesimal ways. So a lot of people think that in order to become spiritual, we have to go to a mountaintop or whatnot, so and so on. Um, not really. Not through our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, because He is the way, the truth, and the life. We're in the world, but not of the world. See, but it's, it's really beholding Him, taking our eyes off of man and people, in other words, having man and people evaluate, and, and, and getting to the real crux, the real crux, the real mess up, you understand, of the matter. You understand? Um, remember, there were three crosses, three crosses, three crosses, but only one of them, you understand, was the cross of our Savior. So, so Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, we touch on, but on language, because language is the key. His majesty, the language is the key. But see, a lot of us, when we look at language, we think about like other languages. We think about like going to a restaurant and ordering some food or whatnot, or speaking to people in, in a, you know, a, a, social, a social setting. And that is one use of language. But when we're speaking about language in connection with our hymenal, when we're speaking about language in connection with our faith, it's a little more, how can we say, scientific in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how we're breaking down this word or building it up. You understand? Know in a sense, deconstructing it, you understand, know so that one can see the essence of it and how it builds up. As we take this word to Wahido, to Wahido, we might not have put this up there, well, let's put this up here in case, you know, in all our speaking, some parts might have been missed over. So why it though basically means, right, to be made, right, one, right, means to be made one, right, in the sense of to be fused. I think that is, that's really key right there, to be fused, fusion. Because the opposite of that word, according to Rastafari word, sound, and power, will be confusion. So when we look at, when we talk about the Ethiopian or the, the, the Orthodox faith, the true Orthodox faith, the, the Ritua Hymenos, the Ritua Hymenos, we'll, we'll touch on the Ritua Hymenos, which we translated more as the correct, the correct faith for the Orthodox faith because orthodox means straight thinking or right thinking. But we have to also remember that who's orthodox? Whose interpretation? And so we say the Ethiopian Tawahido. You understand? The Ethiopian Tawahido. Some say Tawahido, but um, I'm surprised the priest didn't tell you that it's not Edo. You understand? But um, right there it is, uh, you see, Tawahido. Tawahido. Tawahido faith. Right? What are the principles of it? In other words, why is this word perhaps the most important word in this, in this title? Even more so than even Ethiopian. You know, because this is what makes Ethiopian, in that sense, kiddush. That's what makes Ethiopian holy, is the true knowledge and practice, and the faithful fulfillment, as His Majesty, the Imperial Majesty says, of, of the Christian um, principles and requirements. That if we were to live, he, he keeps breaking it down to the point of that we were to learn this and live it. Learn it and live it. 
And a lot of times it's us who make it a little bit more uh, um, complicated than it should be. You know, I'm not saying that we have to study and to grow in it, but we're focusing on things like, for example, even the white Jesus, right? And, and, and people say, well, you touched on the white Jesus a whole lot. Yeah, as, as it is an obstacle, as it's an obstacle to the truth, right? Because many Ethiopians are now accepting this image that one time they barely even accepted a, a gift of it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they did accept certain gifts from other Christians as, okay, this is how y'all see Christ. You, you know what I'm saying? But something has happened since the godless and creeping coup. Something has happened in the Ethiopic um, psyche. And something happened um, in a rebellion. You know what I'm saying? In other words, when you turn away from John, you know what I'm saying? He still loves you, but he lets you go on your own. Y'all got to do it your own way until y'all repent. So it's Rastafari, to Wahido, which means that this is the true faith. You know what I'm saying? When we're talking about the orthodoxy, we'll talk about that in the next, in the next vid. Because what do we mean by orthodoxy? The real important thing are these documents and are those faithful Ethiopians, you know what I'm saying, who are willing to share, teach us, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and to help us in the real liberty of it without this denominational thing. We know that there's the whole thing in the church, and there's this, there's this part of the church, but that part of the church. What really shows us is that this is the end of the church age. And, you know, the more we repeat that, people think, oh,